Coming up this weekend at heavyweight, Andre Orlovsky is in the same position he's found himself for three years. Gatekeeping that top 15 and looking to put his three-fight win streak on the line when he takes on recent co-main event finisher first round uh, to boot the prototype Jake Collier, former middleweight, doing things, moving and shaking, up at 180, or not even 185 pounds, 264.5 pounds to be exact. For Jake Collier, it's been interesting, right? Because since he had the long time away, there were injuries, there were this, that, and the other, he loses to Tom Aspinall in impressive fashion, which is forgivable because Tom Aspinall is a buzzsaw. So then he goes out and he beats Sean Vellante, and people go, okay, well, you know, John Volante, recognizable fighter, memorable fighter from 205. Then he loses to Carlos Felipe by split decision, which is it's ridiculous because he won that fight. But then he goes out there in the first round and he beats Chase Sherman and goes like, hey, you know what? I am a grappler. You don't think of me as one, but I am one. So now he's taking on Andre Arlovsky, who, listen, I thought about this fight as a movie quote from the Trailer Park Boys, the first movie, when Ricky's like, you know what? Lucy banged a lot of chicks and she banged Sarah and I banged Sarah and a lot of chicks too and we realized that we were banging a lot of the same chicks so then we got together and pretty much the rest is history and in this fight Arlovsky's fought Aspinall he got finished by Aspinall he fought Carlos Felipe he beat Felipe Collier lost and they both fought Chase Sherman on all of this very recently so like Ricky and Lucy I say let's have a little bit of fun Arlovsky, Collier, Matt, your thoughts, I assume, both strike. All over the place right now. Uh, here's the weird thing about this fight. Jake Collier fights like a middleweight at heavyweight because he was a middleweight and now he's fighting at heavyweight. Andre Arlovsky fights like a middleweight at heavyweight. He uses movement. He's not a power puncher. He uses volume. He's not durable, but oddly enough, doesn't really get hit that much at this stage of his career, so you don't really need to worry about it. But Jake Collier is a much younger version at this stage of his career of Andre Orlovsky. And I seem to pick against poor Andre every fight, and he keeps on winning at this stage of his career. But I can't get over that a 43-year-old is on a three-fight win streak in the UFC. It is wild to me. But for Jake Collier... I think he can get past the Andre Arlovsky skill check. I do. He's a good enough volume puncher on the feet to where he should be able to match whatever Arlovsky brings to him. He does check leg kicks, which is something that, oddly enough, you have to ask yourself when you fight someone like Andre Arlovsky. And like you had mentioned, he is starting to go back to the grappling mindset that he had previously in his career. And although we haven't really seen Arlovsky tested in that capacity at the heavyweight division, because he does have really good footwork and uh, takedown defense, so you don't really have to worry about what his defensive grappling looks like, I don't think he can make this a consistent grappling type of fight with someone like Jake Collier who might not get into the top 15 of this division and if he does might only be like a 15 to 12 guy but I do think he's one of the more skilled guys currently residing outside the top 15. So the boo birds are going to be there and listen there's people that ride or die with a former UFC heavyweight champion Andre Orlovsky but the weird thing for Collier and it's not that it's weird his output's really good for the heavyweight division and listen you want the two sample sizes the Carlos Felipe fight and the one against Jean Volante. In those fights, 123 significant strikes against Felipe. He had 100, or sorry, 130 against Felipe, 123 against Volante. So it went up against better competition, some would say. And the weirdest part about it is Andre Orlovsky in his long, illustrious UFC career that, oh, I should mention, you know, uh, this weekend he will be t- number two overall in terms of most UFC fights with 38. Only once really twice in recent memory has he gone over 100 significant strikes once against chase sherman he landed 105 and once against ben rothwell in 2019 he landed 152 so arlovsky used to be the great knockout artist when he first kind of bounced onto the scene he had the world series days he came back he had the losing streak he reinvented himself as a very technical boxer but collier has more of an output and Collier throws wicked leg kicks for this division, and he's very, very speedy with them, and he tends to defend well when he throws them. So if you can't make him pay and he continues to throw them, listen, Jake Collier can be a problem. So the odds in this one, you have Arlovsky open to minus 190 favorite, minus 126 right now. Collier open to plus 165. He's a plus 110 or thereabouts. And if we have a look at topology, I'm going to say over under 70% Collier. Uh, under. You're going to say under. It's what the heck. 518 total votes, 85% Arlovsky, 85% by decision. For the 15% that have Collier, 63% by decision. Jake Collier is going to win this fight by decision. You seem confident about that. Yeah. 
Uh, I like Jake Collier, but I wouldn't be surprised if Arlovsky won by decision whatsoever. Any fight at heavyweight that you think might go to a decision, it's not a bad idea to bet Arlovsky just because, hey, he's been winning a lot of them lately. But I do agree with you. I do see Jake Collier being most likely to win this by decision. To me, Arlovsky fought a very similar guy in Felipe, who Collier lost to when I get, you know, salty about it. He beat Vandera. I'm somewhat salty on that. I thought Vandera won two rounds, round two and round three, but... Ultimately, Arlovsky wins unanimous decision on his record. Collier's of that same ilk where he's a 264-265 heavyweight that more than likely has to cut to make the heavyweight limit, even though he used to be a middleweight. Fleet of foot, and he throws really good volume. Jared Vandera throws all right volume, but not great volume. Felipe throws volume, but also gets cracked and then waits and has long periods of inactivity. So for me, I like Collier in this one. You're going with Collier. Let's hear it from the Boo Birds, Yankees fans and the Bleachers. Let's hear it from you. But both of us in this fight going with Cuba, Missouri's own Jake Collier, the prototype to get the win. Are we wrong? Are we right? We'll find out on Saturday night. And a big time main event coming up with Rob Font. Take out Marlon Ferry. You're not going to want to miss it. Keep it locked in with Fight Name Picks. And as we always say, let's, let's get, get into it. it.